I've done it. Well, almost. I'm getting so, so close. I have a fully 3D printable mechanical keyboard switch. And this one actually has a little too much force going on, but I can fix that. Basically, the problem is too much of the spring is being contacted by this um, cylinder here. You can see that? I just need to print, you know, print out a little reducer that goes on the end of that so that the part that touches the spring is slightly smaller. It makes this weird click, sort of clicky sort of sound. That's not intentional. Once I put the reducer on there, that should fix that problem. Uh, it should have about 55 grams of actuation force by default uh, when I release it. But you can actually, it's parametric. You can make it whatever you want. The amount of throw here is configured for four millimeters, but again, you can make this as you can make it a short throw or as tall throw as you want. I haven't figured out the clicky part yet, or the tactile feel, but this linear switch should work just fine. And for reference, this one's a little sticky, but that's only because this, I haven't sanded off the first layer of squish. You know, on a textured bed, you get um, you know it's just not suitable for this. You gotta sand it a little bit. Or use a, you won't have that problem for a smooth bed, or you increase your tolerances, I guess, in the, in the, in the SCAD file. But this should do the trick. Now I gotta get the, uh, the part that goes in the bottom here, and I figured I was just gonna do a plate um, that just touches another set of plates. So basically, a piece of foil or something that attaches two piece, other pieces of tape or foil and have wires coming out the sides. Something like that. I mean, a whole bunch of things I can try. But I think I'm pretty much settled on this general design. It snaps together. It's only three parts. It's the stem, the top cover, and the body. And then there's going to be a fourth part, which is going to be whatever the um, the bottom is. And for reference, the bottom will be hot swappable. So this part is designed to fit. I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a indentation on the side there, just like a cherry. So it will fit right in any given cherry slot. And what's interesting is it's actually got a slightly shorter throw. Can you see the body here? It's slightly shorter than the cherry. Um, for the same amount of actu actuation distance. Uh, so I'm not sure how that'll work out. I'll have to try it. I might have to make it longer, make it so that when the bottom goes... I was going to have the bottom go in, but I might just have it stick out so that it actually matches, because I've got a, like a millimeter or two to play with there to get the same exact size requirements. Um, so here's your example cherry. I think that's actually a Gar Garderon Cherry MX clone. I forget. Let's look closer. But anyways... I think I'm just about done. I'm so close. It feels great. It feels like a normal key. I just need to uh, fix a couple minor issues. But other than that, it works and it doesn't wobble. I fixed that problem where if you push on the corner, well, you know, it's going to slide on my key to bed here. But it goes down if you push on the corners. So my fingers are sausage fingers. It doesn't get stuck anymore. And that, you hear that clicking sound? That, that's just a squishing against the spring because it needs a smaller contact surface. Um, but it works. It works great. And I've got that ortho planar spring in there, and which is super cool. It saved a ton of space over the Archimedean spiral spring. So awesome. I'm very proud of this work. And very soon I will be releasing it, and you'll be able to make your own freaking whole freaking keyboard out of this with these switches. And it, it'll be a great switch, I promise. It'll be, like, as good or even better than a Cherry So it's turning out. It's turning out awesome.